thank you all for being here tonight and thank you to the British Library for hosting us and organizing this event on a series of events on entrepreneurship. Um, as, as she mentioned, um, I'm the co-founder and CTO of Eventbrite. We're today the leading self-service ticketing platform pretty much in the world. Uh, we're helping uh, hundreds of thousands of event organizers every day organize events it's like this one. Uh, we have events ranging from yoga classes to music festivals to uh, food fairs to pretty much anything you can imagine as a live experience we have on the platform. Um, we sell about 2 million tickets a week. Uh, that's a, lo a lot of tickets. We started from zero, so it's a pretty impressive growth in 10 years. Um, we've handled more than $5 billion worth of ticket sales so far. Um, the trend is still rising, so we're hoping that we've built a sustainable uh, long-term business for ourselves. Um, but I didn't want to talk about the business tonight. Uh, I think that something that was covered and is being covered every time you get entrepreneurs here. I wanted to share a bit more of the personal feelings of what it feels like to be an entrepreneur and go through the journey. And at the same time, debunk some of the misconceptions that people have about entrepreneurship. And this, I think this, a lot of these misconceptions prevent a lot of people from taking the leap of faith that you need to go into entrepreneurship and to take control over your life and start a new business. Um, <clears throat> I think society has created a, a perfect profile of the entrepreneur, the Richard Branson's of the world. People have it all. We want to emulate them in all shapes or forms. We want to learn from them. We want to be them. That's great. I mean, I, they're great entrepreneurs. They've lived their life to the fullest. They've built great businesses along the way. But I think everyone, every one of us in this room has the potential to be the next one and to be the next one on your own terms and not on the terms that society dictates a perfect entrepreneur should be. I'm going to focus and share a bit of my experience on three specific misconceptions that I've observed and that have become a lot more prevalent, I think, over the last few years. The first one is that you have to be an industry expert to start a business in that industry. I mean, we are three examples of that is not the case at all. When we started Eventbrite, we had almost zero experience about the organization of events. What we were deeply um, passionate about was trying to solve problems through technology. How could we mix all these different technologies that were appearing here and there into a tool, a tool set that um, our category of users, event organizers, could benefit from and could help them run their businesses every day? When we started, there were some software for event ticketing. It was mostly reserved for big arenas and stadiums, the Chelsea's of the world, um, but nothing for the small and medium-sized organizers. These type of events where it's 250 people who share a passion, who want to become better at something, who want to enjoy themselves. The state of the art at the time was Excel spreadsheets and emails. We thought we could do better and borrow some of the technologies that were um, utilized for bigger events and combine them with the simplicity of online payments and self-service uh, platforms. PayPal was the first piece of technology that we integrated into our offering. The beauty of PayPal at the time was with just your email address, you could start selling tickets within a few minutes on our platform and collect the money directly. Nobody else offered that at the time. Nobody else had thought of it. We just put the pieces together, realized that a very large segment of a certain population, the event organizers, had no tools at their disposal and that with our well, my coding skills at the time, because I was the only engineering, team, uh, engineering uh, founder on the team, that I, we could create a platform that people could use all around the world to make their life better. The best business ideas um, most often find themselves at the intersection of trends, creativity, and curiosity. So don't stop looking at the world around you. There's a ton of ideas floating around. You never know where you're going to find it. Maybe it's going to be tonight when you have a discussion with someone who's working on something specific or has 
a big problem that they're trying to solve. Think about how Uber was created. It was because they were stuck outside of a tech conference in the snow. There were no taxis. That's how it all started. They wanted to resolve their own pain point of not finding transportation when they wanted it with the tool that they had in their pocket, the phone. And that's what created what is today the most valuable private company in the world. It often starts with a simple question, what, what if we applied X to Y? Borrow from other industries that are using specific technologies, try to think of different ways of putting things together to create a new experience, a new way of doing things. And to be frank, disruption today comes mostly from the outside. Look at all the big corporations that are struggling to reinvent themselves, to change their business models. They have so much at stake that they cannot think outside of the box. And oftentimes, we are a great example of that. We are all on the panel are great examples of that. Disruptions come from the outside, from people who know nothing about the industry and can bring a fresh set of eyes on the business itself, how people have done business over the years, and how we can make it better. So don't be afraid to jump in, even if you know nothing about the industry. I think it's a, maybe the industry needs it after all. Um, <clears throat> the second thing I wa wanted to tackle was that as entrepreneurs, you have to be good at everything. You have to be these superheroes who know everything about legal, accounting, product marketing, um, advertising, et cetera, et cetera. From the exterior, it often appears like these uh, successful entrepreneurs know everything about everything. But the truth is that the best entrepreneurs know what they are good at and focus on that. And they manage to convince the best talent out there to join them and tackle all the things they don't know how to do or that they're not the best at. I think that's the best skill you can have as an entrepreneur. It's this ability to create teams that will help you during your growth phase and take you to the next level. But to be able to do that, you have to know yourself very well, know what your strengths are. Um, as an example for myself, I knew fairly early on that I didn't want to manage big teams. That was not what I was excited about. I was excited about building a product, a product that people used every day that would change the lives of millions of people and how they did things. That's what excites me every day when I um, think about my role at Eventbrite. So we decided early on to hire a VP of engineering. Not usual, I think a lot of CTOs would have wanted to build those teams, but that's not, that was not my strength. I realized it, I acknowledged it, and I made my peace with it. And our VP of engineering today is running the entire engineering team. And he's much better than me at it. I bring many other things. I have the whole history of the company. I love the product. It's my baby. That's what I feel I can't really relinquish. Uh, we have a great product team as well, and I work very closely with them to make sure we uh, move in the right direction, that we are still curious and able to integrate all these great new technologies that exist all around the world that are being developed and think about creative solutions to the pain points of your end users. That's what I constantly think about and, and strive to be the best at this. We all come in different sizes and shapes with different backgrounds, with different knowledge. And a big part of the entrepreneurial journey is to learn more about yourself. When you're confronted to all these different problems, and trust me, at the beginning, you have to handle a lot of different things that you didn't think you would ever tackle. Um, a great book that I've recently read and I, I would recommend to all of you is called Mastery. And one of his um, argument is that natural talent and high IQ rarely explain future achievements in life. And that to become a master at any subject, you will need years of apprenticeship to be surrounded with mentors that will show you the way and to learn as your company grows more about yourself and what you're good at and what you want to be working on. The final point that I think, especially in the US, people put too much emphasis on is that you should, as a founder of a company, put your company first. And 
I meet way too many entrepreneurs that are so absorbed by their founding their company, launching it, growing it, that they forget about, they forget to live, simply. They never take time off. I just was just with a co-founder of a company that got sold five years after they started it, and she had not taken a vacation for five years. They neglect their friends and family. They stop thinking about taking any breaks, and they are just spending all their time building what they think is their dream. And I'm going to share a very personal story that I haven't shared before uh, tonight with you because it really changed my life, out, my outlook on life in general, and how I approached uh, entrepreneurship along the way. I got married very young. I was 24. My wife was, was 24, 25. We met in college. She had a, a small limp. Um, she had bone cancer when she was nine years old. As a result, she was uh, committed since after the uh, illness that she had to enjoying life to the fullest and not wasting any time. She didn't want to waste any time. She couldn't, want, she couldn't waste any time. She uh, knew that cancer was going to be a big part of her life and that she was at risk any time to become Ill, Ill again. She was very supportive when I started, uh, when I decided to create Eventbrite. She knew I had an entrepreneurial itch to scratch. Uh, she could see it. I was very excited about the project. But the one condition that she put was that we would continue to, to live our life to the fullest and that I would not let my work take over and ignore um, her needs as well. Uh, she loved to travel. We traveled everywhere, even in the first years when we were building the company. I took two, three weeks, took off, went with her wherever we decided we wanted to go. We moved to Paris for a couple of years so she could finish her PhD uh, in French literature. We saw our friends. We loved to eat out. Uh, it was something that she loved. And I'm very glad we did it. Um, uh, that we continue to live our life like we wanted to live it. Her life was short. She passed away three years ago from a recurrence from cancer. And I'm very glad today that I didn't let that, uh, the work, take over my life and prevent us from living those moments. And I think there's a big risk when you become entrepreneurs to fully dedicate 100% of your time and forgetting about your loved ones, forgetting your other dreams, the personal dreams, the ones that won't get included if you don't make time for them. I think life-work balance today is a lot, a lot more trendy topic than it was. Um, I remember every day that life is short and that you have to take advantage of where you are today and make the most of it. So here you have it. Examples of counterintuitive assumptions that you think are necessary to build your business. But no, you don't need to be an industry expert. No, you don't need to be an expert at everything. You will never start if you wait until the moment when you're ready or you think you're ready. And no, you don't need to spend all your time on this. So I would challenge you today to create your own definition of what being an entrepreneur is. Get inspiration, get role models, learn from them, but define for yourself what it means for you. We're all unique, we all have different aspirations, different strengths. Fulfillment will only come if you manage um, to have a deep understanding of who you are. And trust me, building a company tells you a lot about who you are and what you can and cannot do in life. And <clears throat> have a willingness to learn and to take a leap of faith at some point, a faith on that you can do it, that you're the right person to do it. Stop listening to that imposter voice that tells you, no, you're not worthy, that you're the wrong person to do it, you'll never make it. And challenge yourself to change the question and, and ask yourself, instead of why me, why not me? Thank you. Thank you.